So Boris Cherny, the creator of Cloud Code, shared a Threads post about how he and his team at Anthropic use Cloud Code. I think this post is relevant for Cloud Code, Gemini CLI, Codex CLI, all the other CLI tools, because a lot of these are based off of Cloud Code. They all support MCP servers. They're now adding skills. So even if you're using a different CLI tool, there are still some good gems for you to learn from this post. And it's very interesting because Cloud Code is super customizable, but he actually uses it with a very low amount of customizations. And let's take all of this with a huge grain of salt. And I'll tell you why. Cloud code usage is not the same for every user. We already know about the limitations of the pro plan. And we already know that even if you're on the max plan, sometimes you don't get the same usage. Sometimes the model is degraded. And in most cases, a lot of us are not just context engineering, but we're usage engineering. We're making sure we're getting the most out of cloud code without wasting tokens and without wasting usage. And Boris Cherny and his team don't have that problem because they have unlimited token usage. So what they show here might not be exactly how you and I can use it, but we can still take a lot from it and learn how to optimize our workflows given our down to earth limitations. For those that don't know Boris Cherny, he works at Anthropic and he created cloud code as a side project. Keep in mind, this is when Cursor was taking off. About a year later, coding and AI engineering is the number one AI use case right now, as pointed out by Open Router State of AI paper. I'll link to my video on that above. But Cloud Code changed the game because since Cloud Code came out, there have been a ton of new agentic CLI coding agents. Codex and Gemini to name a few, but there's so many more. And in my opinion, Cloud Code is still the best. It has the best model and has the most advanced feature set. I still use Gemini CLI and Codex CLI and a bunch of other coding tools, but Cloud Code is my go-to. So anyways, yesterday he created this post. I created Cloud Code. Lots of people have asked me how I use Cloud Code. So I wanted to show off my setup a bit. My setup might be surprisingly vanilla. Cloud code works great out of the box, so I don't customize it much. There is no correct way to use cloud code. We built it in a way that you can use it, customize it, and hack out however you like. On this channel specifically, we talk about MCB servers, skills, slash commands, hooks, sub agents, rules, and so many more ways to customize cloud code. But according to Boris, he uses it pretty much out of the box. So let's see. I run five clouds in parallel in my terminal. I number my tabs one through five and use system modifications to know when Claude needs input. It looks to me like he's using iTerm2, which is a terminal tool for Mac. They have this functionality to have multiple terminals in this tab interface, and he labels them one through five so he knows which one needs his input. He also runs five to 10 clods on Claude.ai, so cloud code on the web in parallel with local clouds. As I code in my terminal, I will often hand off local sessions to web or manually kick off sessions in Chrome. I also start a few sessions from my phone in the cloud iOS app. So five terminal sessions, five to 10 web sessions and multiple sessions via the cloud iOS app. It's already setting off some alarm bells in my head just because that's a lot of tokens. That's a lot of usage. That's a way to charge your credit card or hit your usage limits really, really fast. So it's cool that he uses it like this, but for the average Joe, I don't know how cost effective this is. Number three, I use Opus 4.5 with thinking for everything. It's the best Best coding model I've ever used. It's better than Sonnet since you have to steer less and it's better at tool use. Agreed. I only use Opus 4.5 right now. Our team shares a single Cloud MD file for the Cloud Code repo. We check it into Git and the whole team contributes multiple times a week. Anytime we see Cloud do something incorrectly, we add it to the Cloud.md file so Cloud knows not to do it next time. So in theory, this is cool, but if you've been running Cloud for a while or any of these agentic coders, you know that their main agent file eventually gets too long. I try to keep mine no longer than 200 lines, if not less than that, because I've seen Cloud.md files not be too effective lately. So to say that the whole team is updating it weekly, I can only imagine what their actual Cloud.md file looks like. But what's interesting here, the topmost rules always use bun not npm and of course anthropic just bought bun and bun is newer and technically better than npm but cloud code usually goes back to npm anyways during code review i'll often tag cloud on my coworkers prs to add something to the cloud md we also use the cloud code github action so what's interesting here is he's actually using the comment in github to tag cloud to modify their cloud.md file i haven't done this before but i'll give it a shot number six is the one that most resonates with me in this channel most sessions start in plan mode all of my sessions start in plan mode if my goal is to write a pull request i will use plan mode and go back and forth with cloud until i like its plan from there i'll switch into auto accept edit mode and cloud can usually one shot it a good plan is really important 100 percent agree i spend so much time in plan mode by the way the way I actually use plan mode is I first give my PRD, then I tell Claude to use the ask user question tool to ask me questions about my PRD. Then I switch into plan mode and then I start going back and forth with the plan and the outputs come out so much better. Seven, I use slash commands for every inner loop workflow that I do many times a day. This saves me from repeated prompting. Slash commands are essentially reusable prompts that you can do by just typing slash and then whatever you named it as. In this case, he's using commit PRs. 
but there's many use cases for slash commands. It really depends on what you're doing repeatedly. They're really easy to create. It's really cool is that Claude can now also use those slash commands on its own. Use a few subagents regularly. Similar to the slash commands, I think of subagents as automating the most common workflows that I do for most PRs. I've covered subagents before. I'll link to that video above. Essentially, you can create a subagent within Claude code that has its own context window. It has its own system prompt. It has its own access to tools. And you can have your main agent call the subagent to do that task. I do it a lot for QA testing. I do it a lot for research. So when I'm doing something with my main Claude agent, and I don't want to bloat that context window. I have it call that specific subagent to do that task. It can even run in the background and then come back and give the answer or the data to my main agent. They're really easy to make. My advice though is not to overdo it. Not everything should be done as a subagent. Sometimes a slash command is enough and sometimes a skill is enough. So now he talks about hooks. We use a post tool hook to format Claude's code. Claude usually generates well formatted code out of the box and the hook handles the last 10% to avoid formatting errors. Hooks are essentially a way to monitor events. I have hooks for when tools are used, when agents finish and when agents need my feedback. Very useful and also very easy to set up. Now, number 10 is something I found very interesting as well. He doesn't use the dangerously skipped permissions tag. This is essentially YOLO mode. A lot of people like this one. This lets Claude go out and do whatever it wants without asking you permission all the time. It's very beneficial when you wanted to go and do some autonomous coding. But as I'm sure everyone has experienced, sometimes Claude or Codex or Cursor or whatever agent you're using gets a little bit too comfortable to make some commands or do some stuff on your computer that is just a headache to revert. So Boris is essentially saying, I don't use YOLO mode. Instead, he does slash permissions to pre-allow certain bash commands that he knows that are safe for his environment to avoid unnecessary permission prompts. So this is a great advice that I never thought about. I always cringe when I turn on dangerously skip permissions. I never know what's gonna happen, even with Claude Code. 11, Claude Code uses all my tools for me. It often searches and posts to Slack via the MCB server, runs BigQuery to answer analytics questions using the CLI, grabs error logs from Sentry. So here he's talking about tool use specifically showing us a single MCP server. And to me, it's interesting how little he talks about MCP here. Right now, he's only showing us once, and he's also hinting how he doesn't only use MCP servers, how he also uses the BigQuery CLI to get other data. Because in most cases, if there's a CLI tool, you don't need an MCP server, assuming it exposes the same set of tools. 12, for very long running tasks, I will either prompt Claude to verify his work with a background agent when it's done, use a stop agent hook to do that more deterministically, or use the Ralph Wiggum plugin. I will also use either permission mode, don't ask, or dangerously skip permissions in a sandbox to avoid permission prompts for the session. So this kind of comes back to tip number 10, where he talks about permissions, specifically when you're trying to get Claude to run long running tasks. I think the biggest takeaway here is to have it verify its work using a stop hook. Here he talks about the Ralph Wiggum plugin. For those that don't know about the Ralph Wiggum plugin, it started off kind of as a joke, and now Anthropic has added it into their plugins. It essentially lets Claude run in this infinite loop. It's a really cool idea, but if you're limited on tokens and on usage, it will burn through both of those really, really fast. For someone with an unlimited credit card or maybe someone that works on an Anthropic team, it's awesome. But if you're being conscious of your usage, I'm not sure about that. And it's final tip, the most important thing to get great results out of Claude code is give Claude a way to verify its work. If it has a feedback loop, it will give it two to three times better quality for its final result. And I talk about this a lot. I've talked about the feedback loop with Playwright, with Chrome DevTools, with a test write MCP. Here he's talking about the new Chrome for Claude extension, which essentially gives Claude the ability to control your Chrome browser and look at what it's created and have that whole feedback loop as well. If you're building something that's web-based and you give Claude that feedback loop, it will help so much because Claude could check its work either from a UI visual perspective, or also looking at the network, also looking at the logs and just feed that back to itself and improve it just like real developers do. So yeah, I think there's a lot to take from this. I find it pretty interesting that he didn't mention skills at all. He barely mentioned MCP. He focused on hooks and slash commands and custom agents. By his definition, this is a vanilla usage of Claude code. And I've been following Boris journey on threads because when people comment to him about problems with Claude code, he usually replies with a solution. I suggest giving him a follow. Anyways, let me know what you think. If you have any feedback or questions, drop in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.